So thank Alex for the introduction and thank the uh, organizers for inviting me. Uh, my name is Chen Fengjian from Tsinghua University. Um, so uh, the talk today uh, I'm going to talk about is uh, forward and backward mappings for quantum graphical models. Um, it, it's basically a mixture of both uh, a survey of results that, that I'm reading uh, uh, recently and also uh, some of my own results. Uh, and because uh, the more I, I read, uh, uh, the, the deeper I read, uh, the dig in the literature, the, the more I find the relevant work. So maybe I do have important uh, papers that I didn't mention, that I sh but I should. Um, but also, uh, given the, the time constraint, I, I, I select uh, a bunch of work that related to this topic. Um, so uh, quantum graphical models is a fancy name. Uh, uh, and and, and before that, you have to understand what is um, the classical, the classical uh, uh, models are called uh, publicistic graphical models. Um, I guess you all uh, have heard about it. Um, they are unified uh, uh, frameworks for uh, uh, modeling uh, uh, complex conditional dependency among data, it's a very powerful tool. And there are uh, two flavors. One is called direct graphical models. Um, so like the, uh, the graph um, on the right, um, you have arrows between the nodes and, and the arrows are, are modeling the, the conditional dependence. For example, uh, uh, the vertex D uh, has parents E and C. So once E and C is given, uh, then D is uh, independent of the rest of the uh, nodes. Um, and, and, and because this uh, independence uh, information, you can uh, write, distribution uh, among a P, uh, A, B, C, D uh, as a factored form. Um, there's also uh, another model called undirected graphical models. And, and in physics, uh, uh, it, it just uh, described distribution called Gibbs distribution. And also uh, people call it uh, Markov random field in some areas. Um, and and in, in that situation, it's a product of uh, compatibility functions. So, it, so it, you just have a, a product form where um, the, the, the distribution P, A, B, and uh, C, D equals to some local functions, uh, like, like for example, phi A, B, it depends on the function, uh, uh, depending on the variables uh, X, A, and X, B, and, and phi A, C, and phi A, D. According to this uh, graphical uh, representation, you have a factorization of the probability. Um, and, and these are two uh, uh, major uh, graphical models. And, and the, the, the tools for uh, reasoning about uncertainty and, and to pick out the, the dependence among data. Um, and uh, it's obviously an uh, 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 important area for uh, data science and machine learning. And I give a reference here, uh, which I found very useful uh, by uh, Wainwright and Jordan uh, from 2007, uh, called uh, Graphical Models, Expanded Functions and the Variational Inference. Um, so, uh, as I said, the, there are models for uh, modeling conditional dependence, and um, uh, in, in the case that we are mo most focusing on is uh, the undirected uh, graphical models, uh, you, you, you can consider uh, uh, different type of uh, Markov uh, properties defined by the graph. Uh, one is called global uh, Markov independence, where basically uh, if you uh, have uh, regions like A, B, and C, and um, if all passes from A to B must uh, go through uh, C, um, or otherwise, you, if you remove all vertices in C, then A, A and B are not connected. Then you have uh, 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 the condition dependence that uh, given C, A and B are uh, independent. And also there's a, a weaker version called local Markov independence, where you would only uh, require that maybe for a vertex, um, given all its neighbors, then the vertex is independent of the rest of the, the nodes. Um, it turns out that the, the, these two conditions are equivalent uh, for positive uh, distributions. Uh, interesting without to know. And, and more importantly, there's a famous theorem called uh, Hammersley Clifford theorem. Um, it says that, um, that the two things that we consider so far one is factorization, you have a distribution, you can factorize uh, the distribution uh, according to the graph. And the other thing is uh, the, the Markov property, uh, you have two equivalent Markov uh, property, uh, they are equivalent. So if a graph is uh, factorized, then they have the Markov party, uh, property according to the graph. Otherwise, uh, if you have uh, a Markov uh, uh, 
uh, property for, for distribution according to a graph, then you have factorization. So it's a if and only if condition. And I guess it's one of the most fundamental uh, result uh, in, in classical uh, uh, graphical models. And we will see that the quantum case is much more complicated than this. Um, and, and, and there are a lot of uh, interesting problems and, and uh, algorithms that people care in, in this uh, area. Um, we can roughly group the problems into three uh, different areas. One is called inference problems. Uh, basically, you know the model, uh, all the parameters that you need to know, and you want to learn about the properties of the, of the, of the model. For example, you want to compute uh, the margin distribution. We have defined a, a global distribution, what, what is the uh, margin uh, distribution. Uh, the second uh, type of problem is, is to learn the parameter uh, of the model. Uh, you don't know the model, you, you, you know some observations about, about the, the distribution then uh, you need to uh, learn the, the uh, model of the uh, uh, parameter of the model. Uh, the the third, third one is sampling. Um, you have a model uh, which defines a distribution, can you sample from that, right? Um, and, and we are mostly focusing on the, the first two questions, inference and learning. Um, so inference is uh, to, to learn properties about the given model and learning is uh, the, the other direction. Um, there, there are a lot of algorithms that, that uh, uh, if you, if you look at the textbooks on this uh, well special area, uh, there are uh, many interesting algorithms. Maybe you have heard of some of them, uh, Markov chain Monte Carlo, uh, keep sampling, uh, some product uh, belief propagation, junction tree algorithm, uh, mean field algorithm, variation inference, iterative scaling, uh, EM algorithm. Um, so uh, we, we will uh, uh, maybe talk about some of them uh, in, in this uh, uh, talk. And, and this, uh, uh, Unified framework has found uh, uh, many interesting applications in, in machine learning, uh, statistics, and, and many body physics uh, because of the uh, connection. Uh, uh, Gibbs state is uh, the, the thermal state uh, in, in physics. Um, now, uh, the quantum value, right? Uh, we have uh, talked about uh, purely classical uh, uh, models. Uh, what are the quantum models? Uh, the, 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 there are actually different uh, definitions, and the, the model that I focus on. Is, uh, generalizes the undirected uh, uh, graphical models. So uh, basically, they are, they are quantum gap states uh, we are considering. And, and um, um, so you can consider you have a Hamiltonian and um, um, EAs are maybe polys and, and have uh, parameter c uh, theta uh, real numbers uh, defining the Hamiltonian. And then the, the uh, gap state, uh, we will write it as uh, rho beta uh, theta. Uh, beta is uh, inverse temperature. Uh, and it has a form one over Z and uh, an exponential form, exponential uh, minus beta H. Uh, so at, uh, H has a parameter theta. Um, and, and Z here is uh, it's called partition function, it's just the trace uh, of, of exponential. Uh, so to normalize the state, okay, it's, it's all clear. Um, uh, why is that uh, called uh, graphical models? Uh, you, can, you can think of uh, it's a generalization of the, the uh, factorized uh, distributions uh, of, of this, uh, form into uh, uh, this uh, new form where this uh, capital phi AB now is an operator, not a function, it's an operator. Um, it's acting on a system A and B um, and operator A and C um, and, and A and D. So uh, classically, these are functions, the positive functions give you um, values that are, that are non-active. Uh, in quantum case, I have uh, 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 positive some definite matrices. Um, and this circle product uh, generalizes uh, product. In the classical case, there's uh, a very natural uh, thing to do. Uh, multiplication There's only one natural choice. Uh, in the quantum case, uh, because of the uh, anti uh, non commutivity right? Uh, you, uh, you have uh, many different choices and, and, uh, and the circle product is just uh, one uh, product uh, in this form. Uh, so two, two uh, positive matrices, uh, M and N, a circle product equals to the exponential of the sum of the log. Okay, so uh, you you can see like uh, uh, why why this is connected to uh, the 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 uh, Gibbs state. Uh, usually, this uh, you can think of this phi AB is just the exponential of local terms and take the log and take the sum. Uh, you, you, this will give you the um, the, the Hamiltonian uh, as a sum. Um, but but this is not actually the, the, the only definition. You can you can have other uh, definitions. Actually, in this paper, quantum graphical models and belief propagation by Leifer and Pauling, um, they, they have considered other definitions of the, for the for the product. Um, but we are focusing on this uh, uh, circle product in this talk, and I'm, I'm focusing on the, the Gibbs distribution uh, because I think that's 
most uh, relevant in physics. Um, and uh, we said that uh, uh, classical models are um, uh, powerful for modeling uh, independence. The Markov properties are very essential for classical models. So how about quantum, right? Um, we can define the uh, quantum uh, um, conditional independence using uh, uh, conditional mutual information, uh, S, uh, A, C, uh, uh, B. Um, this is just a, uh, uh, a condition that, that uh, we know that this, this quantity is always non-negative. This is a consequence of the strong additivity uh, uh, theorem um, inequality. And, and uh, uh, when, when this uh, mutual information uh, is actually exactly zero, then uh, uh, you see that uh, uh, the typo here, right? Uh, you have to uh, uh, say that it's uh, A and C are mutually independent given, given B. Um, and um, th there are consequences uh, having, having this condition. Uh, for example, you have uh, uh, decomposition uh, of the states uh, given by uh, Hayden et al. Um, and the equation I, I, I listed here uh, is due to uh, Mary Bruce uh, Ruskai, uh, who proved that uh, for uh, states satisfying this uh, Markov uh, condition, uh, you actually have this uh, funny uh, equation in terms of operators. So the log of rho AB is, is just, rho AB is density matrix on AB, take the log and, and think of this as an operator on ABC. Um, uh, because like if you, if you think of this and this isn't as a, a equation in one dimension, it's a number, right? You have entropy to zero. Uh, this is a uh, operator equation. It's a very uh, interesting uh, uh, result. Um, uh, but like we can, we can define a Markov uh, condition, but uh, when, when you consider a graph and, and, and form a uh, uh, Gibbs state, uh, unfortunately the uh, uh, hemsley clifford theorem uh, will not hold in, in general. Uh, in the quantum case, um, uh, if the state is Markov, then then the uh, uh, it is also factorized uh, in in the definition that we gave uh, the circle product, but not vice versa. Like you can easily come up with uh, uh, Gibbs state that that are uh, not Markov, so that's uh, a problem uh, in the quantum case. Um, but recently there there are progress uh, saying that uh, even though this uh, theorem doesn't hold uh, exactly. Um, uh, they, they, they are true in the quantum case uh, a, a, in a certain sense that uh, if you consider uh, regions uh, like uh, given uh, ABC regions in this form, uh, if, if A and C are very far apart, um, then, then the uh, mutual information goes to uh, zero uh, with uh, the, 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 uh, the distance uh, the uh, R uh, quickly. So it's a very recent result. Uh, uh, and, uh, uh, by uh, uh, Kurahara. Um, a, uh, I think like this is, uh, I don't know, like maybe people realize this before. Uh, uh, this, is this is related to uh, 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 many of the algorithms uh, that we discuss uh, uh, that, that appeared before this uh, uh, results have been uh, formally proved. Um, so uh, the, the, the main message is that uh, quantum Gibbs states, uh, they, they, they are not Markov, but uh, if you, if you have a large uh, so Markov uh, blanket where, where the, uh, the neighbors, you choose a very large neighborhood, then, then you somehow recover the, the uh, independence. Okay. Um, okay, so that's a, uh, basically the setup. And, and uh, finally, I can uh, tell you about the, uh, the, the other part uh, in the talk, uh, forward and backward mappings. Um, so we have a, we have a model, uh, a, a Gibbs state. Uh, defining the Gibbs states and the forward uh, mapping uh, we are talking about is uh, when you're given theta, you have, you have all the information about the Hamiltonian, and you compute the local uh, uh, average values of, the, of operators EA on this state. Um, so it's just the mean value of EA uh, uh, respect to the uh, Gibbs state. Um, um, and and uh, uh, so because we have, uh, uh, for example, uh, uh, m different uh, uh, thetas and, um, and, and you, you take the uh, average values where you have uh, m numbers and the, at least the dimension match and under uh, very mild conditions, uh, the mappings between uh, the model parameter uh, theta and, and mu is one to one. So the forward problem is just given, given theta, uh, compute the local uh, 
average values. And, and the backward problem is uh, given mu, uh, can you find out uh, the model parameter theta? Right. Um, uh, I've, I've uh, called this uh, backward uh, problem uh, learning uh, in, in, in the uh, previous slide and the forward problem uh, inference. So it's like uh, uh, two different names for, for the same thing. Let's, let's see our forward backward mappings uh, that, that we're talking about, okay? Um, and, and you may wonder like, why, why would you uh, uh, do this, right? Uh, actually, there, there, there's um, a lot of uh, uh, background that, that I find interesting. Um, the, um, uh, and, and I'll put it into a convex uh, analysis framework. Um, so uh, you can write the Gibbs state here uh, uh, in this form where this A theta is just uh, the log partition function. We write, it, write it the normalizer into the, into this, it's a number depending on theta uh, into, the, into the exponential. And we've defined a quantity called uh, free energy uh, uh, minus T log Z. So it's a, it's a function of theta uh, because Z depends on theta. Um, and, and you can do a very simple calculation and find out that the gradient of F, the gradient of the uh, so-called uh, Helmholtz free energy is, is actually um, a vector of, of EA uh, average value. So um, in that sense, uh, uh, so nebula F is actually is the forward mapping. Okay, but you take the free energy to take the, uh, the gradient, then it gives you the, uh, the forward mapping. Uh, we will give some uh, notations. Uh, so uh, we call C mu and theta coupled if they satisfy this condition. So um, th these are the defining conditions, right? You have this uh, conditions, you have, uh, if you think of uh, theta as, as variables and, and mu as known, then uh, it's a, a set of uh, uh, m equations of uh, m uh, uh, unknowns. Um, and, and we define uh, M called uh, realizable mean parameters. It's all the uh, mu's that there the is a theta, uh, theta coupled to it. Okay. There, there is a model so that the local uh, information is, is exactly mu. Okay. Um, so uh, th th that gives us the, the forward direction. <clears throat> so you have uh, uh, given, given theta, you can, you can compute mu uh, by writing it as uh, uh, the gradient of that. Um, you can uh, use uh, uh, duality in convex analysis, and you can uh, actually uh, write out um, what is the, uh, um, the, the backward mapping. Um, so because we know that uh, log, log partition function is uh, convex, and therefore minus t log z is, is concave. Um, uh, and, and by uh, uh, the, the, the standard uh, uh, methodology, we, we take the conjugate. Um, and because it's a concave function, we take the inf, uh, the linear term, and then minus uh, f theta and switch the variable uh, theta to mu, we get the conjugate f, f star, okay? Um, and and uh, it's, a, it's a very general result uh, from convex analysis that uh, if you have convex functions, uh, uh, f and, and f star defined in this way, um, then the uh, uh, gradient, uh, uh, nebula F and, and nebula uh, F star actually are inverse to each other, okay? Um, and we can uh, write uh, F, uh, because they are due to each other, F, F is actually the dual of F star. Okay. So, so that's uh, uh, or, or, uh, taken from uh, convex analysis in a very general sense. Um, now you, you wonder what is this function, right, uh, F star? Um, if we do a calculation, it's, it turns out to be the um, entropy function. So entropy comes from um, the local partition function very naturally, you take a dual. Um, so, uh, so F star is a function of mu and mu is, is now in, in some uh, feasible uh, uh, mean parameter set uh, uh, M. Um, if, if, M is, uh, if mu is in, in the in interior of, of this set, then uh, you, you can compute from mu uh, the parameter theta. From theta you define the Gibbs state and, and this function is actually the, uh, F star is actually proportional to the entropy of, of rho. If it's, it's not uh, in, in the closure, uh, then, then uh, you define it to be uh, minus uh, infinity. So it's almost the entropy function uh, with, with uh, certain uh, uh, trick uh, to, to make the analysis uh, better. Um, 
And, and uh, the last piece that I want to uh, talk about in, in this uh, uh, convex uh, duality uh, picture is this uh, a very famous uh, James uh, principle, the maximum entropy uh, inference uh, uh, principle, that um, uh, you, you, you have, uh, like we have, the situation we have here, like have uh, 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 local information about, about uh, system um, and, and, and you don't know what the, system, uh, the state of the system is. And, and the maximum entropy principle says that you, you just choose uh, the state that has a maximum entropy. Um, and there, there are um, some, some uh, known structural results uh, about this maximum entropy uh, state. Uh, first of all, if you consider two um, uh, families of states, one is called linear family, uh, the family of states that has exactly the local uh, uh, mean values uh, depend, depending on, on the mean vector uh, mu. And also you can consider the closure of, of the exponential family. Um, you take, uh, take a theta and you, you form all the uh, uh, deep states um, and take the closure. Um, so these two uh, families, uh, L and E, they intersect at exactly one point if they are not empty. Okay. Um, and and uh, uh, moreover, like, uh, because it's in an intersection, you know there's a state, uh, uh, the optimal, uh, the maximum entropy state we take this form. Um, um, it's a Gibbs state uh, of certain uh, unknown uh, parameter theta, and, and the local uh, matches uh, mu. Um, and based on this uh, uh, principle, or these two uh, uh, results, it's it very easy to uh, rewrite um, the uh, gravitational formulation of F. Where we have uh, uh, derived this uh, first part on the last slide. Um, now, because of this uh, uh, analysis, you, you, can, you can also write it in this much nicer form where the inf is now uh, taken over all uh, density matrices. Um, this is an energy term um, in, in, in mu and, and, and theta. And this is an energy term uh, in terms of state and Hamiltonian. And, and we said that uh, this um, F star is actually an entropy function. So it's uh, uh, minus T uh, entropy of the state. Okay. So this is a very uh, a useful form that we will uh, revisit. Uh, uh, later on, so it's give, give us a variational uh, formulation of the quantity that we, we care about. So uh, now we talk about uh, uh, the forward and, and backward mappings separately. So the forward uh, uh, mapping is the inference uh, part, like the, given the model, uh, what is uh, the, the local information? And the forward mapping is, is gradient of uh, F and it's uh, given by the uh, average values of, of the operators. Um, so actually it's a, uh, known to be a very hard problem. If you want to compute this uh, exactly, um, it should be complete. Uh, in in these uh, two, two papers, uh, they, uh, it didn't show exactly this problem, but uh, it's a related problem that, that we know uh, that are equivalent. So exactly it's, computation is very hard. Um, and, and then uh, people consider uh, what is the, the problem uh, complexity of approximately computing this uh, quantities. That, um, so actually, uh, in this paper, a very recent one uh, uh, by Bravi et al., um, they uh, defined uh, many more problems, but uh, two are relevant here. One is called uh, quantum uh, mean value problem. So you, you, given the model, you want to compute uh, uh, a parameter nu uh, up to some error epsilon. Um, and, and they also consider a quantum partition function uh, problem, uh, just uh, approximate z uh, up to some uh, uh, multiplicable error. So they, they show that these two problems are equivalent, uh, which is um, not hard to show, but uh, it's, it's important to know. Um, and, and these two uh, problems are examples of a very large uh, class of uh, quantum uh, uh, counting problems uh, that are known to be equivalent. And, uh, but we don't know what are exactly uh, the, the, the class of, uh, of these problems that, that they are complete for. Um, so, um, but we know that even absorption is hard because uh, the classical problems, uh, what we know, like for example, we know that in the counting of uh, Stokemeyer theorem, it's uh, algorithm d p two m p. So we don't we don't know better algorithms. Um, so basically, uh, these are hard problems. But uh, the, the approximation versions are not uh, unlikely to be sharply hard, uh, but still hard. And and given this uh, uh, information, uh, we have to uh, resort to either uh, you consider a 
very special instance. You cannot consider the general uh, problem uh, in, in the most general form. Uh, or you can, you can relax your, your condition, you consider some heuristic methods, you don't have a guarantee, but it works well maybe in practice. Uh, so that's uh, two uh, approaches that people take. Uh, what, the first important uh, special instance is that um, in the classical case on trees, uh, these problems are very easy. And you can uh, um, even have a linear time uh, algorithm for solving uh, this, this problem. Uh, for example, you could consider uh, a, a chain uh, a graph, and you want to compute uh, um, the marginal, uh, for example, the, the px1, uh, uh, and you know that the uh, distribution is factorized, so you just need to sum over uh, x2 uh, uh, to, to xn uh, for, for this distribution, and you can um, uh, reorganize the sum so that um, you know, each time you will sum over, uh, for example, you, you sum over the, the last variable, um, and then this becomes a function of, of uh, uh, x uh, minus one. You can you can you can do this uh, one by one. Uh, so it's a dynamic dynamic, dynamic program approach to solve the problem exactly. Um, and this this method uh, can be generalized to to trees. And this is uh, for the chain. And and when this is generalized to trees, uh, this is algorithm is is equivalent to the uh, sum product uh, algorithm and message passing algorithms, or as uh, uh, people call it, uh, belief propagation algorithms. Um, so in, in, in belief propagation, you have um, uh, uh, roughly, it's, it's like a, uh, an algorithm where you, you avert the process messages. And what, what uh, the messages are uh, about is, is what the neighbors think about, uh, uh, what your neighbors think about you, uh, your likelihood of being, being some, uh, in some state. So message uh, uh, updates they have very nice form. Um, uh, so this is a message uh, from uh, U to V. It's, uh, it's a state, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a function about uh, what, what uh, V is, right? What, what the likelihood of V is. So uh, how you update, how do you, how do you uh, get this message? Uh, it's a, a summation uh, of, uh, over uh, X2, and then this uh, product, this is why it's called some product uh, algorithm. Um, it, it, this is about what, what the others uh, took, uh, think of uh, your neighbors, right? Uh, and then, uh, you, you, you take this um, uh, uh, compatibility function and multiply them together and, and trace out uh, the, the, the U part. So, so that's a, a graphical uh, uh, understanding of this update rule. So the message from U to V is just a, a, a summation of a, a product where involving all the uh, other neighbors and, and two uh, functions that, that are representing the uh, compatibility uh, uh, constraints. And, and the belief is just pro uh, proportional to um, the, uh, the product uh, of, of uh, all the incoming messages and also the local um, compatibility function. Um, it, it may not see, seem obvious why this is equivalent to the last slide, uh, the, the, the dynamic program, uh, but uh, if you sit down and, and work it out, it's a very easy thing that you can see that they actually, uh, they, these two are equivalent. Uh, so, um, uh, and, uh, so this algorithm uh, works on uh, uh, exactly on trees and it's very efficient, but they, they can also be applied to loopy graphs. So when, when especially when, when the graph, uh, the loops are, are, are long, they're not short loops, when, because the message passing, if they should loop, then the messages uh, go in circle, right? Um, so people can apply it, but then when, when the graph is loopy, then you, you don't have any guarantee of uh, how, how well it works. Uh, they, they may give you a uh, wrong answer. Okay, so that's uh, belief propagation. Um, and it's actually uh, uh, related to uh, 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 idea uh, uh, due to uh, uh, beta, uh, it's called beta approximation. Um, so remember that uh, we, we have uh, uh, written uh, the problem as, a, uh, uh, so the, the free energy is actually the, the minim minimization problem uh, of, of a, uh, uh, in this form. Um, and, and really the, the, the hard part is to, to compute the, the entropy. Right, of, of uh, distribution. So uh, what this is doing is uh, you, you, you do an approximation of, of the entropy um, uh, according to, uh, uh, to this uh, very simple rule that you, 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 you put all the edges uh, entropy together and, and you, you minus uh, uh, degree minus one uh, copies of, of entropy of the local uh, vertices. Um, and you can, you can uh, See that this is called an ultra approximation because you also need to because once you do this uh, uh, approximation of the entropy, uh, all information here is uh, depending on the local uh, information of the of the distribution. 
um, but we, we don't know how to solve the uh, consistency problem. So you have to relax the consistency problem uh, to, to a local consistency, not global consistency. Um, um, uh, so so um, then, you, then this problem becomes very easy. Um, so that's um, how, how this uh, beta approximation works. Um, and and uh, it, it works well in graphs because uh, uh, when, when you think about uh, the, the approximation uh, of uh, the Gibbs division, actually the, these two are equivalent. You can use Markov properties to prove that um, the, the placement of uh, entropy uh, with uh, uh, the, the beta approximation is, is not a bad choice. Um, and and what's, what's interesting is that um, you, you, you can derive the, the belief propagation update rules, uh, the message passing rules, um, by considering the optimization problem. And, and you find out that uh, uh, the, these rules are actually the Lagrangian multipliers uh, of, of the optimizing problem. So it's a dual picture uh, in the optimization. Um, um, so uh, that, that's all about classical belief propagation. Uh, wh what do we know about the quantum analogs? So actually, uh, people have studied this a uh, long time ago. Uh, Hastings uh, uh, first uh, studies in, in uh, 2007, um, and it's called uh, quantum belief propagation. Um, the, the generalization is very simple. You just uh, take uh, the, the message not to be in operators, uh, what the neighbors think about uh, your density uh, should be. Um, and, and, and uh, the, the rule is, is just a sum product uh, where the sum is replaced by a trace and, and the product is now the, the circle product that, that we uh, introduced earlier. Um, uh, unfortunately, that uh, the, 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 this algorithm is not uh, working well even on a, on a, on a, on a, on a, on a tree, uh, if you only know that the graph is a tree, uh, because that, that Hamsley Clifford fails in the quantum case. Um, if you, if, you, if you know that it's a dual to the, to the beta approximation and beta approximation is, is not uh, 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 a good, good approximation in the quantum case. Um, um, so, so people, when they, when they introduced uh, uh, quantum belief propagation, they have a uh, uh, modification where you can think of it as sliding window uh, quantum belief propagation where you have uh, a, a long window of, of size L um, uh, where all information uh, about this window is getting propagated. So um, you can think of it as, as, as a blanket, Markov blanket being, being long enough so that uh, uh, the, the um, um, conditional between uh, uh, Markov, the Markov part of, of, of the chain is appropriately satisfied. So, that, so, so why this uh, works uh, much better if you consider a longer uh, uh, intermediate uh, uh, window. Um, so um, that, that's, uh, there, there's some recent uh, paper uh, discussing the, analyzing the convergence is um, uh, very hard uh, uh, thing to, to do, um, but people are, are getting uh, uh, progress along this line. Um, and, and, and when Hastings introduced this uh, uh, concept, he, he proved, uh, uh, he proposed a, a very interesting uh, equation, which uh, has uh, been very central to the development of, of this uh, area. Um, so this is uh, uh, what we, uh, I, I would call a, a quantum belief propagation equation. It, it's an expression of the um, uh, matrix exponential. Um, but when, when you have a matrix exponential where the, the, um, the, the terms are not commuting, it's not that, that easy to, to write down what, what is the uh, derivative uh, of this matrix function. Um, and he gave a very uh, interesting uh, uh, form uh, it's over here. Uh, so so like, if it's all commuting, then when you take the derivative, then uh, uh, the beta and also the, uh, the, the, the thing that uh, uh, in front of the, the, the variable uh, V would come down, right? You, you have a V uh, going, going, going uh, uh, in front of the expansion. But now there's the matrices, so it's not that easy, right? Even uh, not commuting, right? So uh, what, what, what uh, uh, Hastings pr provides is, is a formula of this form. So you, you should define a, uh, a variant of V, uh, applying a V, uh, a channel on V. This is like a, a, a mixture of unitaries, right, uh, channels. And this, this uh, F beta uh, T is some distribution uh, on the real line. Um, and this is just time evolution. This is uh, uni unitary channels for, for uh, distribution over unitary channels. So you can think of this uh, phi uh, at your V as, as some variant of V. Um, now now the, the, the derivative is just uh, the, the, this variant would come, come down, okay? And there is an anti Um So you have uh, 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 beta over two uh, 
part in front. Okay? That, that's uh, uh, the, the formulation, the equation. And, and the, the important thing is that um, and this beta, uh, f, f, f beta t uh, function decays uh, quickly with t. And, and it's a distribution uh, centered around a radius of uh, roughly uh, beta, um, the inverse temperature. Um, so now you can work with, uh, together with uh, uh, Leo Robinson bound to, to argue that, uh, to, to analyze uh, the, 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 the behavior of, of uh, 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 such systems. Um, and uh, uh, it tends to be very effective for 1D systems um, um, where, where uh, people uh, have found a lot of success. And uh, it will also give us a, a a uh, very simple generalization of the uh, covariance of two operators. Um, so uh, I've give, uh, given here a definition, uh, which I will use later. The, the covariance, covariance of E and B uh, under uh, evolution of H uh, is, is uh, in this form. So it, it's um, the, the anti-accumulator of A and, and phi H B uh, taking the average value uh, minus A and B average value. So it, it, it will give you exactly the uh, uh, the covariance if everything commutes. Okay. Um, um, the other uh, direction uh, we consider like trees, right? And BP algorithms uh, that, that works well on trees, um, and there are quantum uh, analogs. Um, there is another direction that people uh, can consider is where, where you have, uh, if you think about the, the temperature as an input, right? if the, the input it, it, temperature is very high, um, then we know uh, that that uh, things are much easier. Uh, very recent uh, paper. Uh, uh, Akashi, uh, Liu, uh, uh, Motor, and, and Chan proved that uh, these states are actually exactly separable states, not uh, even close to separable states. Exactly, they, they are uh, separable states. And so, we, we, uh, very recent results, uh, we know that the uh, uh, strong correlation decay uh, holds for the systems when the temperature is high. Um, so, when you have uh, 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 decay of correlations uh, in your system, then uh, the, the local computations of, of the uh, observables uh, can, can become uh, much easier. Uh, for example, you can even uh, try to remove uh, 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 a ring of, of, of uh, terms uh, at a distant L uh, from the, the observable O that you want to uh, uh, compute. For example, you can consider an, a function H, which is uh, consists of two parts. Uh, so B is just uh, this, this uh, ring maybe, and A is the rest of the terms. So if you remove uh, the B, then uh, the, the system will be decoupled, right? the inner, inner part and outer part will be decoupled. Um, so uh, for, for the, the quantity that we care about, we actually care about H1, right? H1 is the average value that we consider. Um, H0 is, is just an approximation that we want uh, to use. And you can bound this difference uh, in a very, very simple uh, form. They can write it as, as the uh, integral of the, uh, Covariance that we defined earlier. Um, the covariance, covariance is a measure of the decay. Um, you know that they are, they are decay very quickly. Uh, we know that we can uh, bound this term. So you, 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 can, you can use this to derive uh, algorithm to compute uh, local uh, density. So, so um, and, and computing local uh, 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 the mean values are, are exactly the forward problem that we are considering. So uh, this is another instance where you can uh, have a higher temperature, uh, special instance that you can solve. Um, there are also uh, some heuristic uh, uh, methods. Um, uh, the first I want to introduce is called uh, quantum Markov anti decomposition. It's based on the uh, variational approach uh, that we, we can write F as an uh, optimization problem. Um, a, and, and it's very similar to the idea that uh, beta uh, permission works. You, you can approximate this uh, entropy uh, function. Um, and, and in uh, quantum Markov uh, anti decomposition, uh, the idea is that you, you choose the a neighborhood, and you define an order of the uh, of, of the of the uh, spins, um, and you define the so-called Markov shell uh, uh, MU as the in intersect uh, intersection of uh, uh, the one to uh, uh, u minus one and the neighbor of, of u. So this is uh, the Markov shell of, of of u. So the, the in intersection part. Um, it, it is is some bounded uh, uh, size, right? And you can approximate this entropy as um, this summation here. Um, which, which is uh, only depending on, on a very small region uh, uh, of, of the system. 
Um, and and you can you, you also need to do uh, to do some relaxation of the global consistency to local consistency. Uh, you you derived what what what, what is uh, called uh, quantum Markov entropy decomposition. It's uh, classically people uh, consider this, uh, and and Pauline uh, Hastings studied this uh, quantum generalization in in, uh, in, in 2011. Um, and and the, uh, the, the, you also uh, uh, notice that uh, because of the similarity, right, the, uh, uh, of this method to the uh, beta approximation, they, they can derive some form of quantum beta integration. It's a different set of uh, uh, rules, uh, how message you propagate, yeah, but, but it's, um, uh, 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 you can think of it as, uh, as analog of uh, another form of quantum beta integration. Um, uh, other uh, heuristic, uh, uh, heuristic method include mean field approximations. Uh, again, we consider such, such a uh, minimization uh, uh, problem. Uh, we want to minimize, uh, if you want, you can minimize this thing, you can compute the log uh, partition function, approximate the partition function. Um, the, um, if you consider, all, for example, the, the, the domain uh, sigma uh, uh, to, to be all the product states, then, then you know how to compute the energy, right? Product state. and um, and, and you know the, the entropy, how to compute the entropy, because it's the sum of the local entropies. Um, so you can, you can easily do this calculation, uh, even though it's a non-convex optimization problem, it, you can really uh, efficiently solve, solve these problems. Um, um, and, and there are also um, uh, generalization of this method. If you think of the uh, product states as the uh, Gibbs distribution of uh, a, vertex, uh, a graph with no edges, right? Um, you, you can you can think of maybe a, a, a graph uh, like a tree, a subgraph of, of the of the graph, which is a tree. Then you can uh, use uh, uh, um, quantum belief propagation um, to um, to do this uh, uh, calculations, and, and you, you you generalize this uh, mean field method, and it's just called a structured mean field approximation. Okay, so. Uh, um, now we will uh, move on to talk about uh, backward uh, mappings, uh, and that's uh, the learning of the uh, model parameters. Um, so the backward uh, uh, problem, um, because we know that uh, this is uh, um, uh, inverse, like the, the, the nebula of F and nebula of star are inverse of each other. Um, and the problem of uh, computing uh, theta is actually solving the equation. Right? You, you have uh, uh, given mu uh, to compute the, the theta, uh, it's a very funny equation because this has a high threshold of, of, of this matrix is, and then uh, the, divide by the, the, the partition function, right? It's uh, a very complete form of the functions. Um, uh, but, but it's an important uh, fact, right? Uh, it, it tells us that uh, you, you want to learn the parameter uh, theta, uh, it's faster to, to match all the local information. Right? Uh, there's only one uh, uh, theta that matches uh, the local information. And this is a, a key observation that uh, utilized in uh, Anshu et al. Uh, result uh, uh, that discussed this uh, Hamptonian learning problem. Um, so the Hamptonian learning problem is uh, from, from the, the, the different versions. One version is from uh, learning from the uh, Gibbs states. Um, so you have uh, maybe have access to many copies of a Gibbs state row uh, according to some true Hamptonian and your task is to find out the parameter theta approximately. Uh, I would say this is a, a related problem uh, uh, to the backward problem, but not exactly. The backward um, mapping problem, a, you, you, you would only given uh, the parameter mu, but here you're given, given uh, the, the Gibbs state. So you, you, you are not only given the average value of E, A, but other average values uh, of your choice, right? So um, that, that's an important uh, uh, fact. Um, um, and what we know about uh, this uh, Hamiltonian learning problem, um, uh, which is cl closely related to the uh, uh, backward uh, mapping problem. Uh, first, we know the, the <coughs> they are sample efficient uh, uh, for local Hamiltonians, um, of, uh, and and that's uh, result and uh, by Anschwert or they, they they showed that the technical part is that they showed that the uh, local partition function is uh, theta uh, is is strongly convex in the sense that uh, the, the Hessian has uh, lower bound. Uh, um, and, um, but, but there's a caveat, like uh, the, the backward problem has, has uh, uh, intrinsic uh, hardness, which is related to um, uh, so-called sufficient statistics. Um, 
because of the dimension match, uh, the, the code, uh, uh, sufficient statistics, um, and 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 in, in the class, even in the class case, we know that uh, such uh, a problem has uh, complex uh, consequences. It, it, it will be a very hard problem. Um, so people have uh, considered uh, 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 alternative approaches, like uh, when you're given the uh, uh, state row, you can uh, measure uh, other local observables other than EA. Um, so so uh, this is what uh, uh, Evan et al. Uh, uh, come up with. Uh, gave you uh, an alternative way of uh, uh, listing the equations for, for, for theta. Um, it's, a, it's a funny set of equation. Uh, uh, and and um, uh, the, the key uh, thing is that you, you can utilize uh, now a richer set of statistics. Um, and and um, what, what they can show is that actually uh, you can, uh, with, with a, a improvement we were recently uh, uh, by uh, uh, Nara, yeah, uh, Narayanan, uh, the, 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 complexity, the time complexity of the Hamptonian learning problem um, is at most uh, poly M, uh, where M is the number of uh, terms or qubits, um, and there's uh, one over epsilon to the uh, O of uh, beta squared, uh, uh, plus some uh, extra terms. Um, so so um, it, it, it's efficient in the sense that the number of qubits uh, dependence is, is good, um, but uh, there's the intrinsic hard uh, part, where we, we, because we are focusing on uh, low temperature case, high, high temperature case is easy, right? Uh, it, it, there's an actual term that, that, that is exponential in, in beta. Um, so um, uh, uh, that, that's uh, uh, what we know about this uh, uh, related problems in, in the backward uh, direction. Um, and, and even though that, that, that's very nice uh, uh, theoretical result, uh, I feel that uh, maybe uh, because the use of um, uh, uh, te uh, algorithmic techniques such as sum of squares, uh, it converts to, to some uh, very high dimensional uh, SDPs. Um, it's a bit not very practical. Uh, if you want to implement uh, algorithm, uh, these algorithms are, uh, I don't think that you can, you can run it on um, large systems. So what, what can we do, right? Um, uh, another thing that uh, what we can do is that you can, you can uh, work, work with the uh, uh, backward uh, mapping problem and using uh, forward uh, uh, mapping uh, as a, as an oracle. So the first idea is you can you can do gradient descent. Um, we have this uh, formulation uh, of um, the the uh, f star as an in, uh, inf of of uh, uh, mu uh, theta in the product minus f uh, of theta. Um, and if you if you work out uh, this is unconstrained of measuring problem. You can you can compute the, the gradient. Um, you, you will find the, that the optimizer actually satisfies the equation that you want. Right? So, so that, that means that you can actually uh, minimize uh, this, this function, compute the minimization problem, and the, the optimizer of the, of the problem will be exactly the solution to the backward mapping problem. Um, so uh, you, can, you can use uh, gradient descent method. This is the objective function. You, you do the gradient descent, and, and what, whatever you find uh, would be uh, your solution. Uh, to the backward mapping problem. And um, so this is in, in some sense, uh, uh, backward uh, mapping uh, reduced to forward mapping. Um, and because uh, if you want to, uh, want to minimize this thing, you have to uh, maybe to, to compute the F star, uh, F theta, or the gradient of F theta. And there are the forward problem, right? Um, and um, so, so um, you have current guess, and you want to compute the gradient, um, um, and it's exactly uh, the forward problem. So you can you can solve the backward problem by by solving uh, forward problems. Um, this is one one idea, and the other idea in the classical literature is called generalized iterative scaling. Um, you can uh, um, there are different names uh, uh, in, in, in this uh, uh, direction. You, sometimes it's called uh, a GIS, general, general, generalized iterative scaling. Uh, it's also called iterative proportional fitting. Uh, it's called uh, uh, smart algorithm. And the basic idea is, is um, uh, you, when you have a, a guess of the parameters and you compute the local densities and you see mismatch and you, you penalize, uh, it's like uh, feedback to, to the, to the uh, parameter theta. So this is a, a quantum version. Uh, you, you can work it uh, with, with operators. Um, a, it, it's, 
maybe look daunting, but it's like a very simple uh, update uh, algorithm where in each step you would uh, uh, update, uh, uh, set an update uh, to delta, which is uh, the, the log of uh, the ratio between the target uh, value and the current value. And you would only consider uh, that you, you compute that y here is, is just a, um, the uh, exponential function uh, of the current uh, uh, guess. And the condition here, the, the, the caveat, you have to uh, make sure that uh, these operators are not normalized. It's, it's like a POVM, uh, otherwise uh, this won't work. Um, so, so it's a very simple update algorithm. So for example, if you, you have, you're very lucky that you have all the parameters uh, uh, cracked, then this will be um, uh, mu a, this will be mu a, and this will be one and, and w will be zero. So you will stay, uh, it will be uh, staying in, 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 uh, in the same uh, place. Um, um, so that's a uh, non-commutative uh, version of, of the GIS algorithm, which we didn't give, but you can, you can uh, easily come up with when, when the matrices are all diagonal, you have exactly um, the, the GIS uh, algorithm. Um, and um, <clears throat> this is also an example that you can, you can solve the forward, uh, backward problem by solving a forward problem because we want to compute this thing. This thing is a, a forward uh, computation. Um, and you can compare the, the, the gradient descent and, and the QRS. Um, the gradient descent, you, you, if you compute the gradient, it's just uh, the difference of, of the two values. The, if it, they are a mismatch, you know uh, how to update them. And, and you need to choose uh, a learning rate, which is not clear how, how to do, uh, how, to how to choose that. Um, in QRS, it's, it's much simpler. You just take the logarithm of the ratio. So you, you don't have to choose a learning rate. Um, and we can prove that uh, QIS converge um, uh, using a method called auxiliary function method. An auxiliary function is just a function of a matrix and a vector. It satisfies several properties. First, that uh, when delta is zero, that this quantity is always zero. Okay. And uh, uh, the second is important. Like uh, we have uh, uh, this algorithm, this update. Um, th this uh, auxiliary function must satisfy that the delta is chosen so that um, this, this function is maximized, okay? Um, uh, by computing the gradient, uh, like uh, you, you will see that exactly you can choose a function so that uh, this is exactly um, the delta that maximizes this function. Uh, so one and two tells us that actually A is uh, strictly larger than zero if it's not uh, yet, uh, if there's an error, right, if delta, um, is 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 updated? Then it, it, you 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 will like this this auxiliary function will be uh, positive. Uh, the third property of the auxiliary function is uh, is that it measures the, the progress. So you, you consider some initial state, um, uh, and at time step uh, t you have y t. At some step t plus one you have y t plus one. Um, you measure the difference, right? Um, it, it's positive. So 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 in some sense this in decays, right? But it's, it's starting from the finite uh, value. You cannot decay forever, right? And so this would prove uh, that this algorithm actually converge. Um, and to prove this inequality, you have to use the, uh, 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 a very strong, uh, very interesting inequality uh, called uh, colon Lyob inequality. Uh, it, it, it has this form, like it's a trace of uh, E A plus B is most the trace of E A E C uh, e to the lambda max uh, B minus C. If like B equal to C, then you cover the uh, golden Thompson inequality. But golden Thompson is not uh, sufficient for proving this inequality. You have to uh, dig in the literature and find uh, that there's uh, something further um, to prove uh, this uh, inequality here. Then uh, you have one, two, three, then you can prove actually uh, QS uh, converge. Um, but this only gives you the convergence. Uh, what about the convergent rate? Like how, how fast this algorithm will converge? Um, and, and then to, 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 to talk about this, you, you can um, compute uh, the, the so-called Jacobian of the process. The QIS is an update uh, uh, algorithm. You can compute, uh, like there's, there's some mapping from theta uh, t to theta uh, t plus one. Um, and you can, you can compute the Jacobian um, by a theorem um, due to uh, Ostrowski. Uh, this, uh, uh, the, the convergent rate, uh, convergence, uh, is governed by the so-called spectral radius. 
of, of the Jacobian. It's just like if it's linearized, it's a matrix. If the matrix is shrinking, right, then, then uh, you're good. Um, so uh, what is this matrix? It's identity minus uh, gamma inverse lambda. The gamma is a, a diagonal matrix where um, you have the mean value of the operators. And this is actually the second derivative. This is the uh, first order derivative of the uh, uh, partition function. Um, and and the, the lambda has this uh, very nice form. It's actually the, the um, um, using uh, Hastings uh, quantum preprogramming operator, we can write it in this form. Okay. So the question is then, uh, can we bound uh, the, the radius uh, of this uh, expression? Uh, we have some progress. We haven't finally solved this thing. Um, the, the, we can link it uh, this in to the to the uh, and result uh, uh, where you 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 can um, give upper bound on the uh, largest taken uh, value. So the, the because we know that this uh, uh, Jacobian is uh, having this form, and so it's uh, 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 and and because this form of the lambda it, it's. Uh, you can easily prove that it's uh, uh, greater than the uh, uh, Hessian of the uh, log, log uh, partition function a, and then uh, we can we can uh, prove that uh, it's uh, at most one minus m lambda uh, mean l. A lambda mean l is, is is known have a lower bound, so you are minusing uh, some 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 uh, uh, noticeable quantity, so it's bounded away from one, right? Um, the, the thing that we didn't uh, succeed, uh, actually, we, we, we thought that we uh, uh, proved it and, and even wrote a paper uh, on archive, and uh, uh, then uh, later on we realized that uh, the proof isn't correct. So, what, what we also need is we want to prove a lower bound because we want to bound the uh, radius, right? We, we need to prove that uh, the, the eigenvalues are not too negative. And actually, we conjecture that all eigenvalues are positive, even though we haven't uh, uh, been able to prove it. So, the conjecture is that uh, uh, there's two matrices that we defined. Uh, on the side, uh, they actually satisfy a, a, a matrix inequality. So, so the, the, the second order of, uh, matrix is bounded by the diagonal uh, uh, first order matrix. If you can prove this conjecture, then uh, we have a, a rigorous proof that uh, the, the, the QIS algorithm actually have a, a very uh, good uh, convergence rate. It's uh, well, they'll converge in polynomial in M, uh, uh, steps. Um, so this is some numerical results. Uh, uh, comparing the QIS and GD, you can see that uh, QIS is indeed faster uh, than GD. Um, uh, and there, there are also, uh, uh, um, uh, but, but like if you, if you run this algorithms, uh, even for um, a system of 10 qubits um, uh, using brute force uh, conventional size matrix computation, um, it's very slow. Um, you need to run this uh, thousand of iterations to, to converge uh, to, to, for example, to 10 to the minus eight. Um, so the question is, is, is uh, can you uh, accelerate uh, this iterative process? We, we've uh, uh, considered a very interesting uh, heuristics called Anderson mixing. Um, it, it's a, a numerical heuristics for accelerating fixed point iteration algorithms, a very general uh, uh, algorithm. Um, and uh, it works for uh, the case where you have uh, iterative uh, uh, fixed point uh, uh, algorithm, uh, so G. The, the trivial uh, algorithm would be apply G over and over again, right? You, you would converge to the fixed point. Um, but um, the Anderson mixing uh, uses a history. So you do, do a iteration, and uh, the second iteration uses uh, um, the, the first update uh, history uh, information. Uh, to, it's impossible to, to digest uh, what actually happens. But, but they are uh, well-studied uh, algorithms. It, in, in the linear case, it's actually uh, corresponding to uh, uh, Kim Ras uh, algorithm for linear uh, equation solving. Um, and, and it works, it's a, the Anderson mixing works uh, for uh, the nonlinear case. Um, and uh, this is uh, what we found. Um, if you, you apply this uh, heuristics, uh, uh, Anderson mixing, you, you can, everything else is the same. The number of iterations will go from uh, 1,000 to less than 10. So it's uh, more than uh, uh, two orders magnitude of, of saving. Um, it, it's very impressive, like when, when I see this uh, uh, result that uh, the classical tricks actually really works. And I find that uh, w when this algorithm would ever uh, be used, maybe uh, in quantum algorithm uh, literature, you do some measurement about the Gibbs state and, and do some uh, calculations. Uh, I believe that uh, uh, 
this uh, classical heuristic must be considered uh, very powerful. Okay, so to uh, to conclude, uh, I've uh, told you about um, uh, both the uh, forward and uh, map, uh, backward mapping problem from uh, a, a convex analysis perspective, and, and we have uh, give, give uh, ways to relate uh, the forward and backward mapping problem um, via QIS. Um, but, but the forward problem, as I said, is a hard problem, right? Um, um, but there, there are approximation methods, or heuristic methods, uh, such as uh, uh, belief propagation, uh, Markov decomposition, or mean field methods um, uh, that, that are known. Uh, so maybe combining uh, the, the, the heuristics for the forward problem and, and the acceleration methods, uh, such as uh, NSA mixing, would give you heuristic methods for the backward problem. And in some sense, the, the, this method, um, uh, algorithms are much easier to implement than, than the uh, theoretically uh, 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 given uh, algorithms that uh, uh, we know. Uh, and and um, um, so, so I, I believe that maybe uh, that, that's something that was considered. But um, in literature, like we, we don't have uh, a very uh, good uh, heuristic uh, analysis of well, how good uh, this this quantum versions actually work. Um, there's only maybe on, on the on the chain we have a lot of uh, good good results. Uh, uh, can we can we generalize this to uh, to to trees even? Uh, it's not uh, quite clear. Um, and and uh, a theoretical problem that uh, I found very interesting: what is the complexity of uh, partial quantum counting? Um, for them, is it as hard as classical, or, or is it sharply hard? Uh, I think we, we still don't know. Um, and um, a, a, another uh, direction, I don't know, maybe it's possible to flick direction. Currently, uh, the, the talk I gave is you, you can you can solve backward by, by forward direction. Uh, can you flip the, the, the direction and you can can you solve the forward by, by can you approximate uh, partition functions by, by solving uh, component learning algorithm uh, problems? That, that's maybe another uh, interesting thing to consider. Uh, so that, that's all uh, for my talk. Thank you for attention. Questions? I have one for starting. So about this uh, complexity of approximating the quantum counting, do you have any conjecture? Like, what, what, what do you think? I didn't spend much time, but I, I would I would consider it would be not similar to the classical case, right? Uh, I haven't like all these uh, different uh, uh, direction they can look. The quantum case is messy, like messier and, and not as clean as classical, but in, in the end, it, it tends out to be similar. Uh, it's, it's my, my impression, but I don't, don't take it for granted. <laughs> okay. Very interesting. <clears throat> Sorry. Very interesting talk. I have a perhaps naive question. So in condensed matter physics, you have like exactly solvable models like um, the Lieb linear model. So does the formalism that you presented here cover these models? And if it does, can can we learn something uh, by uh, you know like testing uh, your proposed methods on these models? Um. I, I, I don't know the, the model that you mentioned, but um, I think that it th would be a very good candidate for evaluating the performance because in the actual models, you, you would uh, know uh, what, what things would work, uh, what are the expectations are. Right? Yeah, so basically like, okay, what happens if you can uh, calculate your free energy uh, analytically? That's, a, that's my question. If you have a model where you can do that. Uh, it, I guess it will be a benchmark for how well this method will work because we would, the algorithms that we would use would be a heuristic and we can compare the result with the exactly solvable result. Is my impression that maybe it's helpful to, to, to use it as an example to, to, to prove that all this method works. Yeah, so thank you very much for the very interesting talk. So. Uh, maybe curiosity ar uh, around the last point. So is this something that classically people know how to, to do? Because classically, as far as I know, um, the backward problem is in some sense well understood, right? So it doesn't go through this uh, uh, gradient descent. You, you can actually learn by just looking locally, right, at the, at the behavior. And so I just wonder if classically this is actually useful. I don't for the know. fourth point, yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know. 
I haven't like. I think like the the um, the way to that that uh, uh, you you can solve backward or via forward is more natural because you write down the equation right. You 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 can you can try like okay whether the equations are satisfied, um, but uh, maybe you can try write down the equation in other way, but it's not natural. I guess. So that's. Uh, um, or another thing that I, I, I don't know, and maybe I haven't spent uh, much time digging the literature, what is the general uh, result? Like if you have a mapping, like a, a, a continuous uh, function mapping from IN to IN, you can have an oracle to compute the forward direction. What is, what is the complexity of the inverse? Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, maybe maybe it's known. Uh, some uh, numerical analysis literature, they, people know that uh, kind of uh, question as well, but I don't. Any final question? If not, let's thank Jinping again. But before I go, uh, just that I have four reminders. Okay, no, four announcements. Two reminders. One that you have a picture now. So do you know where you're going to be? Okay, the photograph is coming, so we'll figure out where, where, where we're going. Uh, the second one is I have the business meeting at uh, 12.30 here in this room. And there are two uh, announcements. Uh, one, this is a smoke-free campus, so we should not smoke at all anywhere. Okay, so please respect that. Uh, and second, you should uh, really follow the guidelines for the trash. Uh, so the volunteers, they need to, after, like, uh, like by the end of the day, they need to to split uh, like uh, bottles that are in the burnable trash and so on. So please do follow the guidelines and throw the cans, uh, uh, plastic bottles and uh, everything else in the burnable ones.